Hello, this is Greg Bittner, Spokane Mortgage Strategist, with a uh, brief video here on Mortgage APR, Calculating and Evaluating Mortgage APR, which stands for Annual Percentage Rate. Okay, how do we calculate annual percentage rate? Well, we uh, take the uh, components of the loan in this triangle format here. It's a pretty easy way to explain this. We have your loan amount, your rate, and your payment, okay? So any, if we know any of these, any two of these numbers, we can calculate the third. So what we're going to do is change the loan amount to a loan amount plus the fees to do the loan, keep the rate the same, and we're going to get this new, what we'll call new payment. And that's the number we need to bring down here to calculate APR. So we're going to use new payment, original loan amount, and it's going to come up with a new interest rate. And that's going to be called annual percentage rate, APR, what it costs you to, to borrow the money. The idea of APR, uh, and it's mandatory that we have to disclose it, is that it can help a, a consumer shop. Instead of shopping rate and fees, they can shop one number called APR, compare APRs, and if it's the same loan, Apple to Apple loan, the one with the lower APRs is supposed to be the better loan. That's the idea behind it, but is it true? Well, there's some problems with APR, the calculation. One is different lenders use different different fees in the calculation. They don't always use the same set of fees. So you could have identical loans with different APRs just because of the way they did it. Uh, prepaid interest, the interest you pay from the day you close till the end of the month. Uh, if one lender has you closing the last day of the month and one the first day of the month, the guy with the first day of the month is going to have more prepaid interest and therefore a higher APR, even though the loan might be identical. It's, he's going to have a higher APR because of the way it was calculated. So that's another flaw. The biggest flaw, I think, is APR amortizes the fees over 30 years. Well, no one keeps their loan 30 years. I don't care what it costs me over 30 years. Tell me a realistic cost, you know, over a realistic amount of years, and that would be three to seven on a national average, and three to seven on the, for my client base, too, is, is really accurate. So tell me what it costs over three to seven years comparing loans, not 30 years. And here, we're gonna look at an example with uh, two loans. One that has a, a lower payment, a low per, lower APR, and a lower rate. All three things, God, it's gotta be the better loan, right? Well, maybe, maybe not, let's take a peek. So let's calculate out two different loans. We have a $200,000 loan at 5%. Principal and interest would be 1,074. We wanna calculate APR, so we're gonna add the loan fees, in this case, 3,000, keep our rate the same, come up with this new payment, 1,090. We use that 1,090 down here with the original loan amount, those two numbers to calculate our APR. So we have an APR of 5131. Okay, well, let's compare that to a new loan and see who has the better APR. Well, you go to another lender, same day, same rate environment, they say, geez, I can give you 4%. You say, well, that's way better. And it has a 955 payment. Well, that's way lower. And it's got a 4.530 APR. Well, geez, that's way lower. Now, if we get a little into the calculation, you're going to see that the loan loan plus fees in our, on our 5% example was 203, here it's 213. So we have $10,000 in extra fees. Well, yeah, that's what it costs to buy it from five to four, okay? You may or may not have been told that, but that's that's what it's gonna cost to buy it down that far. Uh, so let's see, well, is that a good idea? I'm saving an interest and, and you know, I know I'm paying more fees, but how does it pan out? Well, if we look out at 30 years, if we look out at 30 years, um, Excuse me, there we go, 30 years. If we look at it 30 years, we look at interest plus fees. Okay, that's what this is, interest plus fees. 156.739 versus our 5% loan. Well, yeah, it is way better, but that's 30 years. Remember, we don't keep loans 30 years, so let's look at it at 15 years. Mm -hmm. Still better, 113, 114 versus 132. 4% loan still winning. Not many people keep their loans 15 years. Maybe their house, but not usually their loan. And so let's go, That we said three to seven years, let's go right in the middle of five, and you'll notice that interest plus fees are almost identical. In fact, the 5% has a very slight edge. That means anything less than five years, the 5% is actually the better loan in terms of cost of money, interest plus fees. So if you were to sell at two, three, or four, or refi, you're actually were better off in terms of fees and cost of money on the 5% loan, not the 4% loan. So you need to keep all this uh, in mind when you're shopping loan the loan and, and, and take APR with a grain of salt. Hope that helps.